Hi everyone, this is Sidi Sarivas, and I just wanted to take a moment after this uh, speech and language session that I just had with one of the students that I work with. Um, he is uh, in high school and he has autism. Uh, and we actually had a really fun session to start off. And uh, he was smiling, he was transitioning from the therapy room that we were having. We were actually providing therapy in a public library room, like a separate room. And then we were walking out and um, immediately he started getting really agitated as we were getting out about to leave the library. And started grabbing his mom's clothes like this and like ripping it off and she was about to show her chest to everybody and, and things like that. And then um, we were able to pry his hands off of her clothes. Uh, and it was, he's very, very strong. He's a very strong young man. And, um, and her chest was getting all red from the friction and everything. So we were able to pry his hands off and we were talking him through and the whole time we we're both having our, you know, using very calm voices. You can also see even though the mom's voice was calm, her body was really tense. And it's, I get it, like, it's hard to be in a public place. You're in the middle of the entranceway. People are coming in and out. You're about to have your, your body parts, your chest exposed to the public. You're dealing with people's points of views and judgments about you as a parent and of your child, and they don't get what's going on, and they're wondering if they need to call the police. There was a lot of things that were happening at the same time. And so after, he, after I got in the middle and where it was able to help mom pry his hand off of her clothes the first time because he kept grabbing repeatedly at her he started grabbing at my clothes and something different happened with me um so instead of pulling she wasn't consciously pulling away like this to, while she was trying to pry his hands off but she was leaning back and what I did instead was I guided him to one of the walls and I leaned in and I'm leaning in and I'm actually still being like, Hey, I'm here and this isn't you. And who are you being right now? And I'm pushing in and I'm putting, I'm using my body to provide pressure on his body against the wall. Right. And one of the things that happened with that is he kind of looked at me like, you're not giving me the response that I'm looking for, that I'm used to. That's like, you could see the wheels turning there. Like, this is different. But the other aspect of this, and this is not just for children with autism, but definitely very effective with a lot of them, the children with ADHD, ADD, any sensory regulation, a lot of times, depending on the type of sensory regulation difficulties that they have, for some of them, when you actually push against their body and it's a firm pressure to their core, it relaxes them. It actually kind of resets their nervous system. And so that's what I was attempting to do with that while also he couldn't thrash as much because his arms were between us and I could then do one finger at a time to let it go of my clothing while it's between us and, and distract him and have his hands then to his sides and then down. The thing is beyond the physical, beyond the physiological, it was the energetic. I wasn't resisting and reacting to his behavior. I didn't give two shits <laughs> if anyone judged me for having to manhandle him and do this in a public space. I wanted him, that, and I also wanted it to be very intimate and him to kind of just really see me and not be having all the simulation of everybody else, including his mom, and having to process her stuff and trying to push her buttons to get this response from her. I was getting, I was in his face and all on top of his body putting that pressure so that he knew that I was totally with him and I didn't care about anything else that was going on and that I recognized that he wasn't being him at those in that moment and he looked at me and he was like huh and then i asked a question in the middle of this i was like what is he aware of i asked him out loud is like, what are you aware of right now and immediately i got that he's aware that his dad isn't outside yet and he doesn't like waiting out there he he's like my, my dad's not outside yet to pick us up so i would go out there for what reason 
but he didn't have the words at the time verbally to express this, but he told me energetically, I got that that's what he was aware of and that's why he didn't want to go outside. And so until his dad was there to pick him up, which his dad is usually waiting outside for us, right? When we are done with our session, this time he wasn't, he's just a couple minutes, you know, he needed a couple more minutes. And so it was such a gift for me to get that awareness. I just asked the question and, and I received it and it doesn't always happen so fast and it's okay if it doesn't happen that quickly. In that moment, I was so glad that it did happen because I was able to be like, hey, I get it. Your dad's not here yet. Because he would, and then he said, yeah, dad. And I was like, yeah, I get it. Your dad's not here yet. Even though your dad's not here yet, this is not okay. You cannot act like this. You need to be you. We hear you. Could you have your hands down, hands down, and be kind to mom and be kind to me and be you? And I was using his name. I'm not using his name right now for privacy purposes, but you get the idea. And so he started calming down. We were able to move him from like the second entranceway to like the one that was right next to the exit door. And he could clearly see even more that his dad wasn't there. Here's the thing. As soon as he wasn't getting the reaction that he wanted from me, he went and after his mom again to grab her clothes. And, and she even recognized it. She, he was like, she, the mom said, well, he's actually, this is part of what I'm working on is to not react. Cause I get that that's exactly what he's looking for. It's just, it's really tricky sometimes. It's hard sometimes for me to not react. And, and how many of that is relevant to us? I mean, there's definitely other aspects of my life where I'm not so calm, <laughs> where it's not so easy to take a moment and take a breath and, and kind of get the whole picture of what's going on when it comes to like violence and crisis situations and, and work with these types of kids and parents, I'm like totally calm and at peace and I can just like work with that chaos, work with and through that chaos. Um, and I'm asking for that to show up more and more in my life. The piece that I got from it was, wow, how much more is possible when we don't resist and react to things? How much more can we invite other people to and we can invite our children to and we can invite, gosh, you know, just groups of people and, and situations to if we didn't resist and react, if we actually were able to lower our barriers. Like I was willing for him to punch me in the face in that moment. I leaned in. And I got in his face and I nuzzled up my cheek because I was like, he might bite me. Like, mate, that's a possibility. I had the thought in my head. It's like, he might bite me. And I was like, and that's okay. And I even told him, I was like, it, you know, not verbally, but in my head, I was like, if that's what you feel like you need to do, you can do that. And I will still love you anyway. And I know that that's not actually you and who you are. So just get that that's actually not going to change how I feel about you. And I got, I sent him that message. And, and so he was still wanted, I think, from his mom to also acknowledge that he knew that his dad wasn't outside. So fast forward a little bit. We're still wrangling with mom. He's not pulling on my clothes anymore. He's definitely trying to get mom's attention. And, and she hasn't learned yet. We're practicing and playing around with him, her using the tools of acknowledgement and how powerful acknowledgement can be when she acknowledges everything that she's receiving from him and that she knows about him, because she's getting so much, she knows so much about him and what he requires and what he doesn't want all the time. She's an amazing mom. Um, then her, the dad sees us through the window and comes in and he get, is, he's obviously really not happy that, that the student, that this um, young man is grabbing on his mom's clothes. Um, now this is where it actually goes in a whole different direction than I would have liked. And the dad actually says, okay, like, Hey, stop grabbing on your mom, grab on my shirt. He was trying to like redirect it. It's like, okay, grab on me instead of your mom. So then the student does, this young man does. And what proceeds to happen is an escalation of the physicality and the grabbing and the grappling in the corner to the point that there was a, a man that walked by to go into the library 
that you could see that he was like, are they fighting or are they hugging or like what's happening? Do we, I need to call someone. He had kind of like a security badge kind of stuff on his shirt, but I wasn't sure what it was because I was really looking at what was going on there. And so it went from, you know, him listening to the dad, following the directions, grabbing the dad's clothes and then the dad telling him right afterwards that he's not, he shouldn't do that and to stop doing that. And they started grappling more. So there's, there's a lot of mixed messages that just added to the confusion and created a lot of havoc. So then there's these two men basically who are grappling in the entranceway of the library on their way out. And um, it ended up being where he's like, basically like, not as a like a like almost like a chest hold holding his hand down dragging him out to the car and putting him in the back seat of the car to go to their next appointment where i suspect that it didn't have to go down that way and as soon as the dad was there i wish the dad could participate in some of our sessions so he can get exposed to some of the tools that we have been using that were very effective until that transition and that we're starting to calm him down and but while he was waiting for his dad. Because um, I was able to remind the mom of some of the tools and um, including some of the access consciousness tools that we've been using that have been really helpful for his behavior. I mean, the whole session was great until we were getting close to the door. So what else is possible? Um, and, and so dad was sending a lot of mixed messages. There was a lot of resisting and reacting. There was this, in a, in a very explicit physical way and also in an energetic way um and this isn't to blame the dad this isn't to blame the parents at all this isn't to shame them this isn't to say that they're at fault in any way um this is you know gosh he's like 16 17 so 16 years of this learned pattern and, and dynamic and and one of the things that mom has mentioned is that unlike a lot of the other therapists that she's worked with, I very much am including her in the therapy instead of just working with their son and she happens to be on the side or telling her about it later. She's like, you have so much more information and you're making sure that I know what's going on more and that I like know what's behind what you're doing so that I can like get it and then incorporate it into the house. And I've been noticing a shift when I do that use the tools that you've been um, you've been telling me about. And one of the resources that I gave her within the first session or two was the book, a copy of the book, Would You Teach a Fish to Climb a Tree? And a phenomenal book written by Anne Maxwell and Dr. Dane here and Gary Douglas, um, the two founders of Access Consciousness with Anne Maxwell, who's an amazing uh, social worker and child whisperer, and it's an amazing resource. Um, and so the mom gobbled up the book and was like, oh my God, this is so great. Especially there's a whole section on behavior and behavior strategies. And so that's what we were using to calm him down. That's what I was using to not resist and react and for him to recognize that he wasn't being who he who really is. Um, and with that, I'm getting that it might be time to do another book club on this book. But beyond that, and I, I'll, I'll give you guys another video about that if that's something I choose and when I look at when I want to do that. Um, beyond that, I'm wondering where is it that any of us are resisting and reacting to in different areas of our life, be it maybe in relationships with family, we might be resisting and reacting. When somebody brings up, for me, it's like anytime someone would bring up children being abused or violence or neglect or um, rape or, you know, sexual assault. I had so much charge come up in my body. I'd get hot from it. I would just have so much contraction and a little, like my face would go, get all contorted and my body would get really clenched and tense. Um, that has changed immensely. And I'm so, so grateful for the shift because one of the things that has happened with me not having all that charge and reaction is I'm actually able to see all of the possibilities in a situation more. I'm able to see what's actually true and what's not, what, why people are saying what they're saying, what's actually behind it, and what I can say or do, including what I can not say or do that's gonna actually contribute to the situation to create greater possibilities. Before, when you're so blinded by the rage and the upset and the, and the triggering of it all, 
you can't see that. You can't actually perceive and receive all of that information so that you can have more choices um, and create something different for whatever situation showing up and for the people involved and for the world. Um, so, so, so grateful for Access Consciousness Tools for that. I'm so glad that I was able to see it in this so clear way how resisting and reacting to things can really limit us. Um, and when we're actually like delve into and play with the idea of allowance, this, I, this tool of allowance where everything's just an interesting point of view and being willing to be judged like the mom not yet is is not quite willing to be judged. She still is holds on to a lot of stuff about other people as a parent and about her child. And it was it was tricky for her. And yet as we were walking to the car after her husband had put her son in the backseat of the car and I pointed out to her the mixed messages that were being sent, she got it. She got it from and she had that platform of that book to refer to and she got it because she's like yeah if it were me and I was told to grab someone sure I did it and then I was punished for it or I was reprimanded because it wasn't it was really punishment I guess depending on your take on it um it was a mixed message and so she's like I get it I'm going to talk to my husband about that and thank you so much for being so calm and 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 being sticking with me through that even though you could have just left and be like all right bye at the end of the session you know um and I was like of course I absolutely have your back so um, very, very grateful for, for this family and the bravery and courage that they are continually being every day um, with each other and for themselves as they navigate this challenging situation of, of raising and supporting uh, their child with autism. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I couldn't not make this video today after the session. It was such a powerful um, illustration of what's possible and also of where there's still places that I know a lot of my parents and families and me could still <sighs> have more allowance and 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 have more peace and ease and and actually find a way to be a a beacon of calm in the midst of all the chaos that can show up in our lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you, and I hope this finds you well wherever you are in the world.